Suppose Jesus Christ appeared today just as he did 1955 years ago in the human flesh and went on television today worldwide. Would you believe him? You may think you would, but you wouldn't in all probability. You'd be astonished at his gospel, even as they were 1950 years ago, because we read in Luke, the um, fourth chapter, and in verse 32, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And they were astonished at his doctrine. And believe me, you would be astonished at his doctrine today because it would be so different from what you have heard as the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ today. You have heard the gospel of men, but about Jesus Christ. The World Tomorrow. The Worldwide Church of God presents Herbert W. Armstrong, internationally recognized ambassador for world peace, visiting prominent leaders around the globe, discussing the cause of world problems, and proclaiming the good news of the world tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Herbert W. Armstrong. Now, what was Jesus' gospel? What is the true gospel, the real gospel that Jesus brought, that God uh, sent him as a messenger? He was a messenger sent from God to the earth with a message for mankind. You find his gospel mentioned back here in Mark and the very beginning of his gospel, what gospel he preached. In Mark 1, verse 1, it talks of the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in verse 14, now after the John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel. But what gospel? Not the gospel you've been hearing is the gospel of Christ. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. About the kingdom of God, not about Jesus and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. He commanded you to do two things, and you don't hear much of that in the preaching today. Repent. And repent means turn around and go the other way, and it means go the way of Christ, the way you live. And it's the way we live that has caused all of the troubles on this world today. We're in a world that is a paradoxical world, a world of awesome, amazing progress, but at the same time, a world of appalling evils and troubles, and troubles that mankind seems unable to solve. And why? It's all because of the way we live. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying the time is fulfilled, it was because he had just overcome Satan the devil. And this has been Satan's world. And Satan has been sitting on the throne of this world. You don't hear that preached either, but the Bible explains that to you. And Jesus explained that. And saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. It was because the king had qualified, and he was the one who was now beginning to announce it. So it was at hand. And he said, repent. That means turn around the way you, and live a different way. Live the way of the kingdom of God. And that's the way of God's commandments. Repent and believe the gospel. Well, how can you believe a gospel which you have not heard? A gospel that is not being preached uh, today at all. Now, at the very end of Jesus' ministry on earth, he had already been crucified. He was just ready to ascend to heaven. And he was speaking to the apostles, to whom, it says here in verse 3, Acts the first chapter, to whom also Jesus showed himself alive after his passion, or his crucifixion, 
by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining, what was he still speaking to his apostles about? Pertaining to the kingdom of God. The apostle Paul preached the kingdom of God to Gentiles. Peter went out preaching the kingdom of God. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But today we only hear a gospel about Jesus Christ. It's a total different gospel altogether and completely leaves out the real message. Now, Jesus would preach the same gospel today because Jesus is the same yesterday and forever. He said, I change not. He wouldn't change. He would preach the same thing today. But you've been hearing a different message about the messenger, and you would be shocked, and you would be surprised. And I tell you, most of the churches today, all of the various churches calling themselves Christian, would call him a false prophet. They would reject him. They would oppose him. They would call him a false prophet because he would preach a gospel entirely different than they do. It would be the same gospel he did preach, but they have gotten off the track and preached a different gospel altogether, and I'm going to explain that now. Now we turn to Galatians, the first chapter, and I want to show you this was written just 22 years after the church was founded, just 22 years after the church was founded in about 53 A.D. And the Apostle Paul, writing to the churches in Galatia, wrote this, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And there were many false prophets going out preaching different gospels, and the true gospel of Jesus Christ was suppressed only about 22 years after uh, the church had been founded. Now, the history of the church shows that from about 50 A.D. until 150, there was a lost century in the historic record of the church. We find almost no record of the history of the church. For 100 years, we find one thing only, that there was a, a, a violent dispute in which many people were, were murdered. The, it, it was such a violent dispute as to whether the true gospel to be preached was the gospel of Christ or a gospel about Christ. And in about 150 A.D., when the curtain lifts on the history of the church and we begin to see an actual history, we find a church calling itself Christian, calling itself by the name of Jesus Christ, but preaching a different gospel altogether, a message about Christ, and also uh, as different from the gospel of Christ and as different from all of the beliefs, the customs, and uh, uh, all of the doctrines of the true church as it started out as night is from day or as black as from white. Now, Jesus prophesied. I want to show you just what he prophesied back in Matthew, the 24th chapter. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. There's more than one building. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not uh, all of these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And then later, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him. Mark's gospel shows there were about four of the disciples that came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now let me pause right there and explain one thing. He had been showing them, they had been showing him the buildings of the temple. He was talking about those things. Now they assumed that the end of the world would come at the same time the temple was to be destroyed. 
Jesus knew it wouldn't come for more than, for approximately or more than 1900 years later. However, they assumed it would come at the same time. So they not only asked him when would these things of the destruction of the buildings of the temple occur, but also the sign of his coming. Now they had asked him two questions and they were going to happen 1900 years apart. So Jesus answered the first part first. Jesus answered and said unto them, now he talked just to them, to those apostles at that time, take heed that no man deceive you. This is not to all of us today. This is what he said to them uh, more than 1900 years ago, that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. Now that did happen in their time. As a matter of fact, I just showed you how they were preaching another gospel within 22 years. But in 70 AD, that temple was destroyed. It was in their lifetime. And many false prophets did come at that time. And all history shows you that. Many have come in my name saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. They would come saying that Jesus is the Christ. They would come preaching about Christ but deceiving people because they wouldn't talk about his message, the kingdom of God. And that was why they would deceive. They would just merely talk about Christ and should deceive many. And ye shall hear of uh, wars and rumors of wars, and they did in that day. See that you be not troubled, for all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That would not be the end. That was coming up just prior to 70 A.D. when the temple was destroyed and the Jews were scattered. For, now at the end, he said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in different places. Now he said, and these, the things that they were seeing, are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and then many shall be offended, and shall betray one another, and they did prior to 70 A.D., and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, and they did, just as they are today, and they have ever since, as a matter of fact. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And now he told about the sign of his coming. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come, the end of the world. You see, the ministers would go out preaching that Jesus is the Christ, preaching a, dos a, a gospel about Christ, but not preaching the gospel of Christ. And they would be deceiving the many, and that has happened my friends, that has happened for now way over 1900 years. Preaching a gospel about Christ, but not the gospel of Christ. And the whole world has been deceived. Now, if I have time, I'll show you other prophecies showing that all nations and all people have been deceived all over the world. But just before Christ's coming and the end of the world, the gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed. It has been on this program and this program only so far as I know. And just 1900 years from the time it was suppressed in 53 AD, in 1953 AD, the biggest, the largest, most powerful radio station on earth, Radio Luxembourg in Europe was open to me. After I had proclaimed that gospel coast to coast in the United States, now it went out to Europe and immediately almost other radio stations began to open up, taking the gospel into South America, taking it into China, taking the gospel all around the world. And it has been going on ever since. But now I want you to notice in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, verses 3 and 4 where Paul, speaking to the church at Corinth, wrote, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent 
or Satan the devil, beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be uh, corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel. So there was a different gospel, which you have not accepted, that you might well bear with him. And then a little further in this same chapter, beginning with verse 13, he talks about those false apostles. Such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They come as the ministers of Christ. They come in his name. They come saying that Jesus is the Christ. Oh, they tell you a gospel about Jesus Christ. They say he is the Messiah. He is the Christ. But they don't tell you his gospel. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan pretends he is God. He is the God of this world, and people don't realize it. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, Satan's ministers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. They don't believe in works, and they say that God's commandments are done away today, and that is what is being commonly preached today. Now, the gospel of the kingdom was of the family of God ruling the governments of all nations all over the world. And it was about government. And government is merely the, uh, well, the uh, uh, administration of uh, human conduct according to law. And all governments are based on a basic law. Now, the basic law actually originated from God. Now, mankind has not been living that way. We instead have been living the way of sin. Now, what is sin? In 1 John 3 and verse 4, you read, For sin is the transgression of the law. And in the seventh chapter of Romans, you will read that the law is spiritual, and it is the Ten Commandments. First of all, it is the, the law of love. The way, it's the way of life. It's the way of love. But now it is magnified. It's love toward God and love toward neighbor. Then God magnified it still more into the Ten Commandments. Now then, 1 John, the second chapter, and verse 3, Hereby we do know that we know Him. I've asked ministers, Do you know the Lord? Do you know God? And he said, Oh, yes, praise His name, I know Him. I said, do you keep his commandments? Oh, no, I should say not. Those Ten Commandments were done away. They were nailed to the cross, he will answer. Now, what does God say here? Hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. That, my friends, that is a terrible indictment against many ministers today who are trying to say that the law of loving your neighbor as yourself, of love toward God, is done away. It was not done away. It never has been. It never will. Now, they talk about believing on Christ. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I'd like to just read a little bit in a scripture about that. Back in the days of Christ, in the 8th chapter of the book of John, and beginning with verse 30, it says, And as Jesus spake these words, many believed on him. Now they believed on him. Many of you believe on Jesus, but you don't believe Jesus. To believe Jesus is to believe what he said. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, that is what he said, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, they started an argument right away. They said, well, we're already free. We're not slaves to anybody. And in verse 37, Jesus said, I know that you're Abraham's children, 
They're descended from Abraham. But you seek to kill me, he said. These who believed on him, they sought to kill him because my word has no place in you. They didn't believe his word. They didn't believe what he said. Now then again in verse 40. But now Jesus said, you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God. And then in verse 44, he said, You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now listen. And because, Jesus said, because I tell you the truth, that was his gospel, I tell you the truth, you believe me not. They didn't believe what he said. Would you believe him if he went on television today? I want to tell you, my friends, I speak the same thing right out of the Bible that Jesus spoke. And people don't believe it. I've even been called a false prophet. They call Jesus a false prophet. You need to know who are the false prophets. You need to know who they are. They are those who do not preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, the same gospel that Jesus preached. They are the ones who are the real false prophets. Again, I want to show you something of those who believe on Christ. And that's in Mark, the seventh chapter, and verse 7. Howbeit Jesus said these words, In vain do they worship me. Now, they believed on him. They even worshiped him. And they worshiped me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God you hold to the tradition of men. And, verse 9, he said unto them, For well you reject the commandments of God, that you may keep your own tradition. And that is what is believed today commonly in what is called traditional Christianity. You will read back in the 12th chapter of Revelation that Satan the devil has deceived all nations and that there is a great mother church and daughter churches that have come out of her and that the whole world is drunken on false doctrines and false beliefs because of that teaching. And that is what the world needs to be warned of what is going on by the Word of God. And I say, blow the dust off your Bible and believe God. The Bible is the Word of God. Christ is the Word of God. The Bible is the same identical Word that Jesus spoke, but it is in print. Now, the church are called out ones, called out of this world to be separate, not of the world. Satan fought to preserve his world. He tried to persecute the true church. He's tried to persecute it ever since. He persecuted Jesus Christ. He tried to... Uh, he turned the people against Christ. They called him a false prophet. He's doing the same thing today. And yet the church exists, and it shall. It, uh, God said it will not die. It will go on to the end. Now, I would like to send you a book that will explain a lot of this to you and make it plain. What is the true gospel? Just what is the true gospel that Jesus preached? That's the only gospel that is the true gospel the very gospel that Jesus himself preached. It's a small book. We can read it at one setting, but that'll tell you what is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You need that. You need not be deceived any longer. There's no charge for anything we have and no request for money. We don't even ask for contributions, anything of the kind, and we'll send you free, gratis, no charge whatsoever, a year's subscription, to the finest magazine in the world and one of the world's great mass circulation magazines now, over six million. I can announce that for the first time now on this program. Our circulation has now gone above six million copies every issue. Now here is a, a very recent plain truth behind the facade of Western unity. There's an editorial by me there and then the uh, cover article. Then here is uh, what children think about nuclear war. That's a rather interesting article. 
then as an article, why the church? Why should there be a church? What's the purpose of the church? Why should anyone attend church? Why should anyone belong to a church? People go, go to church, they take a church for granted, but they don't know why. Then the imperial restoration, the history of Europe, and then the Middle East and prophecy. That's the focus of most of the wars today in the world, the Middle East. And then here's one on smoking. It's more than just a habit. And here's another one, help wanted. Make a job out of getting a job. Make a job out of getting a job. You know, I used to do that myself. I hired myself a job when there wasn't any job and no one needed any help. So uh, that might help a lot of people that are unemployed. There's a great deal like that in, in the Plain Truth magazine. It analyzes today's world news and gives you understanding of the news that you can get in no other magazine and no other place. It is a magazine of understanding. It's a magazine for the whole family. There's no subscription price. And it's one of the largest circulated magazines on earth. There's no request for money, not going to be any, unless you become uh, voluntarily of, of your own volition, a uh, co-worker or a member, and we don't solicit that. There'll be no request for money. We don't beg the public for money. There's something a little bit unique about this program. It's different. For that booklet, What is the True Gospel? And your, your subscription to The Plain Truth, if you're not already a subscriber, as many of you are, you just simply address Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California. That's all the address you need. Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California. And the zip is 91123. Or just go to the telephone right now. Call now, toll free, no charge, 800-423-4444, 800-423-4444. Now, if you live in California, Alaska, or Hawaii, you must dial a different number. You dial then collect 213, we'll pay for the call, collect 213 304 6111. Go to the telephone, call collect 213 304 6111. And if the lines are busy, keep on trying because many people are waiting there for your call. So jot down that number and call again. The announcer will give you the numbers once again. So until next time, this is Herbert W. Armstrong. Goodbye, friends. For the free literature offered on this program, write Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California, 91123. In Canada, Box 44, Vancouver, B.C. Or in the continental United States, you may call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. In California, Alaska, and Hawaii, call collect 213-304-6111. If the lines are busy, please try again. The preceding program and all literature were produced and sponsored by the Worldwide Church of God.